Well, going into game two now, Coda. Two player map again. And uh, looks like, you know, Shine not as comfortable playing on these smaller maps, which is weird to me. I can't believe those yeah. words are coming out of my mouth. It's a new Shine. He's trying to reform himself. Let's see if he can possibly take this game here on Coda. Let's jump into it right now. In the top left in the blue, he's up one game. It is Bial. Oh boy. <laughs> Bial is like, oh, I already took one game off you. I'll just go with an aggressive build this time. Wow. Eight pool. And uh, Shine over here to the bottom right. You already know this flying location on two player map. I don't need to tell you guys. You guys are paying attention. You know what's going on. So. This is uh, this is possibly the demise of Shine in game two, depending on what build he chooses. Yeah. This is usually what this is kind of what this comes down to. You do a safe build, you hold. If you don't, if you even if you do a safe build, you can die to this, or you can get behind from this, and, and the player who attacks can get ahead if your micro is bad, or you just you just make some bad decisions with your control. But usually, what happens is if you play if you play safe, you win. If you play greedy, you lose. And do you really want to? coin flip on a two-player map in most cases most players would say no that's why we don't this is why this is not like a normalcy that we're seeing um but bill risks it and already it's not good for him with shine going for a you know 15 pull here in the main yeah but as you said there is still room for be able to do damage it's probably not going to kill shine here just because he does go for the safe build like he did in the last game it seems like it's kind of the overall theme of shine's play so far today I just want to play save against uh, maybe newly aggressive Bial in ZVZ. And he's even going to scout these lanes coming his way with that Overlord. And he should be prepared to deal with this in time. Yeah. So he sees this. Now Bial is committing heavy on the lings, and he's going to probably go yep, for a Bane Ling follow-up because if, if this doesn't kill, you know, like you said, you can find some damage. And we were discussing this briefly, like, you can maybe try to micro, kill a drone here or there, out, out micro his lings that come out because you have more than he does. But if you hit Bane lings out and you start to do okay with your micro, he doesn't have gas and he's going to struggle. In fact, holding this hatchery is going to be a challenge. He's pulling drones off the line. And Biel is committing to taking on this hatchery, in fact, but the lings do come out here of shine. Biel trying to micro around the side. Good he's control not, here. Yeah, not going to commit to a fight just yet. Yep, just waiting for more of his links to come across. And again, once his bailing nest comes up at home, uh, he'll be able to continue the attack. So he wants to keep every ling alive that he can and just threaten this lost mining time. Yeah. So this is more than four drones down here, right? So actually, technically, economy-wise right now, Biel is ahead. Look at how low this hatchery is. He yeah. may actually be able to commit to this at some point in time, as long as his control continues to be quite nice. Going to commit to a fight here. Yeah, it's a bit odd because there's no way he can win this fight, right? Uh, Biel is always going to have more with the drones helping out. I think that was a rash decision there. I'm not entirely sure why he committed that because that was literally the best fight the Shine could have taken because of the positioning on the lings. Even the Queen comes out now. Speed is on the way and not a Bane Ling Nest, which I find a bit uh, odd, but it, it's a similar type of follow-up, right? It's a, an aggressive all-in. He's going to try to overwhelm the speedlings. But I just find it odd because he just lost all the speedlings. Like so, Either a follow-up becomes a yeah. thousand times weaker if you trade your lings like that. Now you have the one advantage that you have is gone. He has twice the production as you. He has more drones than you. He will have more even drones than that because he has two hatcheries. He has two queens in a second to get double injects. He's got more larva like exponentially than you. Yeah. And the thing about this build that Bill is doing, it really comes down to surprise. But if you will notice, Shine's got overlords all over the place. He's got his lings already in the base of Bill. He sees how many more lings are coming out. There's no hatchery. He sees the gas. He knows something aggressive is coming. And he's not going to over drone. He's going to be prepared for it. Yep. So, uh, I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys except that this game is this game is very, very much in Shine's favor. He also has one shot. Mm. But you, know, you know what I think he might do? He might commit to taking down the hatchery with the speed. 
he makes enough links, he can just do it. Maybe he was just trying to trade out a lot of links of Shine so that he can go for a follow-up. But Shine, I think he's got a good, a good idea of this. He's already got a wall up. Yeah, see, if he can't get past the wall, I mean, your, your theory is, is most likely correct, but if he can't get past the wall, it won't matter. Uh, this is kind of like, this, this is, to a certain extent, similar to what we saw in the Heart game in Game 3. If you have a wall up, doesn't matter how many links your opponent has, he has way more than you. If he can't get past the wall, he, he might as well have zero links. So, uh, and the thing is, this is not even like a good guess from Shine. He literally saw it. With all those links traded, he was able to come across a map and scout. Yep. So nothing is a mystery. And Biel is just simply going to try to play a longer game here. When it comes to economy, uh, Biel is only two harvesters down, but the amount of mining extra that, that Shine has had is there's currently no tab in the StarCraft UI for that. Resource, total resources mined. Which I think is, again, something I talk about a lot, but would love to see in Legacy of the Void. You're going to mention that to the day Please stop casting StarCraft. It's so funny. After I stop casting StarCraft, I'll talk You're about how there should have been. Stuff. There should have been. Like, if StarCraft is, is you know, it's the year is 2072 and we're talking about StarCraft 3 and it's in there, I'll be like, well, I suggested this 50 years ago. <laughs> Uh, when when uh, I was commentating pro league with you, Valas, you remember when I was yeah, talking about that? <laughs> um, Hopefully, at that time, esports is going to be gigantic and everybody's going to be really happy. And you know. it's going to be me, like on like uh, like the Today Show or, or whatever, some other equivalent. Like I'm on yeah. like the show and like, did you ever know esports is going to be this big? I'm like, yeah, but I never knew if Blizzard was going to add the total resources <laughs> mine tab or not. The like laugh track plays in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Maybe someday. So we can always <laughs> One hope. day. Um, well, I mean, this game is just kind of slowly transitioning because obviously with how much Shine committed defensively, uh, there was a lot of risk. Ooh, trying to squeeze through like uh, really butter. Did. But, um, with, with how much risk Shine prepared for, there was obviously a, he almost over-prepared, which gave Biel the time to completely drone up and be insanely greedy. So the game does even out quite a bit, and Biel is going to be going down that Spire path, actually. Yeah. The way this really changes in terms of the build is that Shine, he's got the Zerg just already out in the map. He's going for a similar build, like transitioned into it this time that he was trying to do in game number one. It's just going to be Roaches with plus one in speed, whereas the Spire does come out of Biel. He will try to play that map control, kind of harassy style here. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a style that we've seen work quite well. Um, the player that used it the, the best recently, I feel, was Lucira. Uh, just crazy, crazy cool Muta build uh, that we saw him use, even utilizing him against Infestors at the end yeah. of the, the was, game. That was on uh, Vani Research Station, right? Yeah, I believe so. Another two-player map. So, uh, I'm going to check. I don't believe he saw that Spire. Oh, he did, actually. Yeah. Okay, so he's got a few options. The key is to protect his third base. And then use spores to protect everything else. Or, you know, you could even use spores to break this third. But if you send all of your units and all of your queens and everything else to defend your third against the big speedling attack, the Mulus can do damage elsewhere. Do you have this Overseer flying through? Just kind of get a good look of what's going on here in Shine's base. He's going to see the majority of the units. So many roaches being built up here. He's got that plus one. He's got that speed. And now he's moving across the map. Question is, will Biel have enough? Or will he have enough to just delay here? against the push of Shine. This is the scary push that he has to defend. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Burrow is on the way. That's uh, something that can help him quite a bit. I mean, the Mules are, are being used to defend here so far, but they're kind of weak versus this big tanky Roach Force, which will actually come in and uh, attempt to target down this hatchery. It's going to work. A lot of indecision here from Biel with these Mules. Like, he sent them across to help defend. Now he's start slowly pushing the rest of these Roaches back, but he can't defend his third base. He committed to these lings very late. Uh, it looks like he will actually get these roaches, but they're buying time for some of the other roaches to come back. Transfuse is going off to even help them stay alive. I don't think he can get these roaches, actually. No, he can't. These roaches have plus one. The queen's there. So many transfuses coming down. I think he should have just committed to the hatchery maybe there. He's not getting any damage done. He doesn't have a third base now. Shine's sitting pretty. He's got that massive supply lead as well. Biel should be able to hold on two base, I believe, but... He's not in a good place in this game right now. The one tool he still has is this high Mulus count. And this isn't just a small squad, like 7, 8. I think he's got upwards of 13, 15 right now with three more on the way. It's going to be 18 Mulus on the map. Sporecrawler actually getting targeted down here is pretty oh, wow. huge. Um, 
But the one thing that's missing, of course, is the Infestors. If you can get the Infestation put out and get some Infestors out, that's going to be where Bjorn can no longer use his Mulus. Uh, oh, oh, he's going for the hatch! He's going for it, and there's no Transfuses nearby. The hatch is down, and Shine will be triggered to attack here. There are a lot of Spine Claws. I don't know if that's enough, though. One Mulus here also trying to help out. <laughs> So one needle is trying to do that damage. We're just popping out, trying to help out here. But this is so many roaches. Going to come in right away and snipe down that queen. Now getting to work on another queen. Going to try to do as much economic damage as possible. He's trying to kill some more of these drones. 12 workers go down in total. But Biel takes a supply lead here. He does survive. The one issue, um, of course, being that he doesn't have a third. But Shine doesn't anymore either. Yeah, he doesn't have a third, and he has 25 drones as well. I think from Bjell, he may want to go for a counterattack after he defends this. It looks like he's trying to get an Overseer into his main, just to go ahead and uh, clean up those Burrowed Roaches. Nice little run by here, going to snipe one of the Queens. Should get the other, in fact. Oh, well, trying to get in a good position here, and he does. The drones are even going to help out. He really wants to keep that Queen alive. With some Roaches here, I think he will. But yeah, the, the, the low worker count is a big issue for Bjell. Um, and... Shine, like, as soon as he lost his hatchery, he immediately remade it. And it's going to be up here in just a second. If he can just hold on for a little bit and get a few Infestors out, he's going to be in a position where the Infestors alone can help protect against the Mulus, then he can just start maxing out in Roaches off three bases, something that uh, simply Bjork cannot afford. And he's continuing to spend all of his gas on Mutilus, which is putting all of his eggs in one basket, almost as if he's hoping he's done enough damage that, that Shine will never be able to afford enough Infestors to hold this off. And one or two Infestors well, is not going to be enough. He's going to need, like, four or five. Yeah, he's only going to have enough here for three right now, which, honestly, is not enough against 24 Mutilus already running in. And there's not much support to deal with the Lings, even. They're going to get to work on the Spore Crawler. going to allow those Mutus to get in. He's even going to focus on that Road Tour. No more Road for you, Shine. Yep, trying to trans or focus on the Queens that have Transfuse Energy. And uh, it's going okay for him. Doesn't gets a bit too close to that spore coil. There's a lot of overlords making it difficult to target, which is why these links, like you said, are very important to actually clean those up. The infestation pit here is actually pretty exposed. Here come those investors. First fungal is a big whiff. Second one is good, but it needs more follow-up, and there is none. Is this Mulus Force that's going to win the game? It starts to look that way. And we only have six queens left. Transfuse is going down, but there's too many links as well. Can't deal with the Mulus and the links. GG. And Pio. Taking a very tough win there. Tight comeback, man. That was that was pretty out of control. It was pretty risky business there for a bit. Yeah, very, very back and forth game. Shine, it seems, just not able to do enough damage. I think the uh, the Lings that really helped delay those urges getting up the ramp and helping them take damage from five spine crawlers. And again, just delay, allow the Midas to come back and clean up the roaches. That was really it for Bill to allow him to actually defend and not lose everything in his main. And uh, as you said before, committing everything to those Mutilists. He had such a big ball by the end that three Infestors, when he was mining off of two bases of gas for a majority of that time, while he had the Infestation thing coming out, was just not enough. Yeah. And, um, you know, Yo, very aggressive so far in the series. Echo is going to be our third game. And, uh, would not be surprised to see another aggressive game out of here. As you can see, Solar and Stork are present to give uh, Shine a bit of advice. Um, you know, Stork, the, the coach, also a pro gamer, recently 